What's up? This is Adrian AK Signcraft. Today we're talking about affordable balanced DAX from Chinese manufacturer SMSL, uh, specifically the SU8 and the M300. Uh, similar in price point, similar in features. Which one's better? I've I've been on the forums talking to some people about these and I've gotten a few requests to to sort of share my thoughts a little bit more concretely about these two uh, DAX from SMSL. Uh, this one, the uh, SU-8, has been out for several years. It's become pretty popular. Um, they did a deal at one point with Drop, I know, and uh, offered this thing um, for a very reasonable price. And, you know, if you go and look at the reviews there, Everybody loves it. Um, I've had this guy for several years now, and uh, I'm also in that camp. I think it's it's really great, and it's about 250-ish, and I think I think that's a, a pretty sweet deal. Um, it is a balanced stack. It is has a fully balanced circuit. Um, so, balanced is such a loaded and confusing term, but uh, at the end of the day, it's sort of used. And, you know, this is, I'm doing my best here <laughs> to keep up with all the terminology, but um, there's sort of three elements to uh, when people throw a word around the word balance. Um, so one is, does it have balanced interconnects, which would be three pin XLR um, for your left and right channel. Um, I think I'll do another video about cabling and balance stuff, but, you know, the big advantage with balanced interconnects is that um, they basically um, have two sets of the signal, one inverted from the other, and so as they travel down the cable, when they get to the next place, they get decoded, and this sort of, they match the two up and it eliminates any anomalies that occurred along the way. So really good for like long runs of cable. Um, if you had speakers that had an XLR jack in the back and um, onboard amplification and you wanted to make sure a great signal got to them that'd be a good way to do it in between components in a like desktop headphone stack where you're running six inches three feet of cable <laughs> five feet of cable not a huge benefit but you know hey we eke out every little benefit we can as the audio nerd arati the next um portion of balance is the actual circuit and so are you employing that stem cell thinking within your circuit so that you are reducing the risk of getting any um, corrosion in the signal. Um, and then the uh, that sort of gets a little bit conflated with dual mono, right? Where you're talking about a system where the ground is not necessarily shared between the left and right channel, um, where maybe there's separate signal processors or separate DACs for each uh, left and right channel. Um, so like a fully balanced, um, DAC is a or a fully balanced piece of equipment is a term that I, I have seen a lot of people define a lot of different ways. So I'm still saying the jury is a little bit out on that. Um, and then the last area that uh, balance gets used a lot is for um, headphone cables, right? And that is more like a, a four pin, whoop, yeah, a four pin uh, XLR. And in that case, we're talking about having uh, separate left and right channels, each with their own separate ground. Now you can't necessarily run balance cable like you would for interconnects up to a headphone because you don't have the decoding electronics on the other side of it, but you can separate the left and right channels so they don't share ground and there's some great benefits to that. Whoa! It's way, way too much background and probably most of it wrong. So, you know, go look that stuff up. Anyway, my my focus here today is say okay you're like I'm into balance stuff I want to I want to have a, a balance source to drive I, I got like a you know a, a Jotunheim or something I got a cool or I got a cool balanced you know headphone driver and I want to drive it with a balanced source get the best of the best I can get um, but I don't want to pay a ton of money for my DAC <laughs> um, so these these two so this this one is many years old but it's still in production today still available I think Amazon right now it's like 250 ish I think I've seen it on drop for as low as 180 um, 
And then this guy's a, a, a kind of newer contender for them, a new, it's this woo, cool little form factor, um, super light uh, on the back, very, very sort of similar stuff going on here. Um, and so this guy is called the M300, and, and he's actually, I think, maybe 10 bucks cheaper than him. And this is the M300 Mark II, and, and that is pretty important because um, there was kind of a lot missing from the first round of this that I think turned a lot of people off to it. Um, but uh, now, now it is very interesting and comparable uh, to this guy. So this guy runs um, ESS um, DAC modules, um, you know, pretty, pretty decently regarded. Um, and it runs two of them, one for the left and one for the, for the right channel. Uh, this, this newer guy runs a, a very up-to-date um, DAC chip from AKM, um, but it does, I think it just runs one of them, um, so it's running the stereo signal, signal through there. Um, you could kind of go and look at some of the circuit design stuff for these things. I, I do not care. Um, what I care mostly about is, is how they perform and sound. Um, and I'll get to that in one sec, but just to kind of do the quick overview of, of kind of how these things just stack up in terms of feature set. So um, let's go to the back. So they have pretty consistent uh, inputs and outputs on the back, although configured in slightly different ways. Uh, the SU-8 has um, the balanced 3-pin uh, XLR out, as well as coax or, um, single ended RCAs out, coax in, optical in, USB-C, or USB, I believe that's the B-style plug in, and then your, your standard um, AC power source, I forget what they call this thing, a SAE or something. And then over here on the M300, very similar outputs, single ended and the balanced. Um, here we've got a little five volt uh, power supply um, that goes to a little brick. So this guy, the power supply is on board. This guy, you got a little separate brick to think about. Um, the original version of this was was just powered over USB, which is, you know, not awesome in a lot of circumstances, depending on how you're running it. Um, this guy also has this little antenna right here, which is for Bluetooth 5, which was another addition to the Mark II. Um, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, relatively similar um, inputs and outputs. Um, if we flip back around to the front, um, very nice, minimal uh, in either case. This guy's a little kind of flat rectangular brick. It goes, it's more similar to a lot of desktop headphones stuff. This guy's kind of an oddball shape, love it or hate it. Um, I like it like sitting next to um, like maybe a little uh, bottlehead amp or something. It kind of tucks up next to it, whereas this guy's nice and wide. But on a desktop, with some other components, this thing's gonna get in a stack a lot nicer. There is a SMSL SH8, I wanna say, that's a headphone amp, balanced headphone amp, that kinda uh, has this exact same chassis and, and stacks nicely. Um, this guy does have a little color screen. This guy's just got a little one color um, screen. I'll plug these guys in while we're talking so you can see some of that stuff. Um, but you know, at, at the end of the day, it's it's kind of about the audio performance. I mean, you know, all these little features matter um, in terms of how you experience and enjoy them. But you know, really, really, we care sort of about how the sound stacks up. Um, so here you can see this guy has got his little. It's actually a little full color, like I don't know, one and a half inch screen. It's cute little pictures, kind of go through all your input sources, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to really get in the weeds on all this uh, stuff and the menuing and whatnot. Um, just kind of give you a quick glimpse here. Gotta love that, like, lowercase italic serif font. <laughs> feels so modern. Just totally goes with the rest of this design. Sorry. I digress. Um, so, yeah. Uh, how do these things kind of stack up from a from a sound experience? Um, you know, f for me, they're they're very close. Maybe my ears not good enough, <laughs> but all I can give you is my opinion and what I've experienced between the two of them. I've had this one for a couple of years. I've had this one for maybe three months. Um, so more listening experience here. But I I have a beat these guys. Um, I 
do have a headphone amp that has um, two sets of single-ended inputs, and so I could just flip back and forth um, and and sort of see you know what I liked. Uh, I also AB'd them with uh, balanced uh, outputs into a different amp, but I did have to switch the chords every time, so it's a little bit of a, a delay in trying to remember what one sounded like to the other. But I think overall the, the sound signatures are pretty similar. I think that um, SMSL sort of has a, a, a house sound, if you will, um, that's, you know, maybe um, a little warmer, a little smoother uh, than it is sort of hyper precise or analytical. Um, I don't know. I haven't listened to their really high-end stuff. They've got some thousand-dollar DACs and stuff. I haven't tried any of that stuff, so I'm sort of speaking about things at this price tier. Um, I will say I think that the uh, the SU8 here has a little bit punchier bass. It feels a little more weighty. Um, that it hits a little stronger. Um, it feels a little bit smoother. Like it has a little bit more body. If that makes any sense. I don't know. It's so hard to describe sound. Um, this guy's probably a little more detailed. I feel like he's a little airier. There's a little more space in between things. Um, that results in a slightly drier sound, I guess. Um, but yeah, a little more separation. Feels a little more delicate, a little more precise in some ways. Um, and this guy feels maybe a little bit musical. That's a it's a, yeah, it's a pretty big generalization. They're really close. I think if you weren't A-Bing them, if you just listen to one and then took a five minute break and listen to the other one, I don't know if you could really <laughs> if you could really say there was a whole lot of a difference. Um, but if either one of those descriptions sort of registers with you, then then maybe that's the one to take a closer look at. Um, or you know, if if any one of the the, the the features inputs outputs screens whatever speak to you then the, then maybe that's the one that that, that drives it home for you um, they both come with the uh, SMSL standard remote this comes with all their products amps and uh, I mean not all their products but I've come across at least three of their products so I have three of these remotes um, stacked around <laughs> my house it's not you know it's a, it's a nice little remote um, and and that was another uh, improvement for the mark II is that they added the remote so they had a Bluetooth they had an external power supply and they added a remote um, so right Bluetooth that's that's sort of the wild card here and that's actually why I, I ended up picking this up um, I, I run this uh, connected to uh, a little amp in my bedroom for that setup and while I mostly um, plug a source like my laptop or my phone directly in via USB um, I I do like the convenience of just being able to put something on wirelessly from across the room and I think it sounds pretty good if, if your phone supports um, Bluetooth 5 and this guy supports Bluetooth 5 you know yes it's not as it's not as good as a hardwired USB connection, but you're still feeding the DAC quite a bit of data, and I think it it sounds pretty darn good. So if you want, if you care about convenience, which is audiophile, you probably don't because <laughs> you want to make your life suck as much as possible, um, which is mostly what I do. But sometimes I have a lapse in my audiophileness, and I decide that I want some convenience. Then, um, then yeah, that's that's kind of a a cool little feature. I think that's all I got on this. I wanted to make it quick. This is not that quick, but um, yeah, they're both awesome. I like them a lot. I think at somewhere between 200 and 250 for either one of them, they're fantastic. I've had this guy driving all kinds of amps. Um, I've even had it driving uh, all-in-one DAC amps that I thought were had characteristics I didn't love that much. So, I mean, I think it's a it's a very solid performer, and at the price, I think it's it's kind of a no-brainer if you're if you're nerding out and you want separates and you want to have that flexibility. Um, so yeah, SMSL M300, SMSL SU8. I'd say uh, you know your call. Both pretty both pretty jamming little little boxes. All right, well uh, that's it for today. Um, I will do some more of these things. So if you liked it, give me a like. If you didn't, give me a comment. Let me know what we can do differently. Um, subscribe. Like I said, I'll throw a few more of these things in the feed. This is Adrian. 
Signcraft, signing out.